Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah, I hear him chat to the noise. Too too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the walking. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls better tell me I'm awesome. Yeah, hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Cold like zero degree. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the let out the let out the. Sheets. We came from one man, forget my peace. We take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put him in the cage, never let out the. Let out the, let out the, let out the. I hear him chat to the noise, move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys, not so tough, but lines keep walking. Yeah, just too sharp with the boys. My girls better tell me I'm awesome. Yeah, hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my feet, who's calling? Stop that! Stop that! Stop that! One of my favorite stations on satellite radio is 90s on 9, which is uh, now a classic station for all intents and purposes. But the <laughs> only reason I bring it up is because even though my heyday is ancient, uh, the idea that this weekend the Yankees are in first place, the Knicks are a two seed, we're talking about Conan O'Brien and O.J. Simpson and Saturday Night Live. And I'm like, this is the 90s. It's the, the 90s are back. The, 90, the <laughs> 90s over the weekend. I, I really enjoyed the number of people who seemed to be uh, kind of discovering Conan O'Brien. I, I don't know how some of this stuff happens, where it is that you age out on things. And there's a whole generation, Stugatz, that has no access to Conan O'Brien being on mainstream television because... And that guy makes nothing but good things. Everything that he puts his name on is good. He's got a Mac show. I I could make the argument that he is as good as any late night show host ever, that they have all since desecrated it since he left, but that he was as good as anybody. And now he's getting a lot of love because of uh, his Hot Ones appearance where he just dedicated himself to the idea of comedy. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebetard Show. More famous Conan, the comedian or the barbarian? Wow. Great question. Izzy Gutierrez is here, and I'm happy about this because this is the loudest day that I can remember around the Knicks since that one playoff game they won against the LeBron, Wade, Bosch, Heat, and Confetti fell from the ceiling. They won 50 games, which everyone in town in Miami makes fun of winning 50 games, but it's a big deal that New York has won 50 games, and they sneak into the two seed because DeMar DeRozan can't hit a, a shot late, one of the best clutch players in the league, couldn't hit a shot late in Madison Square Garden. I love that Nick fans were actually having the argument of what seed they wanted to have. They didn't want the two seed, they wanted the three seed, they wanted the four seed, they should have lost that game. It was a bad win in overtime at home. You know what? There was a basketball game being played, and Tom Thibodeau wanted to win that basketball game. He does not care. And I love that about Thibs, but I'll probably blast him five games from now. You, uh, you won't like it in six games because <laughs> Sixers and Heat are both bad matchups for the Knicks. This is what I love about Stu. I have not heard Stu give a passionate Knicks take in years, and the first one he offers is they should have lost that game. I didn't say it's that. Amazing. Oh. I didn't say it. I said I love I that I have a coach and a player in Brunson that doesn't want to lose that game. They want to win that game. They want the two seed. They don't care who they play. Okay, They may, They might in five they, games, they, though. They might want to win the game, but DeRozan was shooting for the game at the end, no matter how much they wanted to uh, win it. One of the things that I wanted to point out, Izzy, what do you do with this? Because the Miami Heat have been an unusual team all year. And on the road, they're one of the best teams in the league. They're 24 and 17 on the road. That's what Denver is, Stugatz. That's what OKC is. Mm -hmm. Boston's a little bit better than that on the road. They've got an enormous game against Philadelphia. You want to win that game and play the two seed. You do not want to play Boston first. They're not going to be afraid of Boston, but you don't want to play Boston first. You're rather... nervous, Dan. Wow. Jeremy just smacked his hands together, Mr. Miyagi style. He's very excited about me being here as his ally, which Finally. I'm very happy to be his ally. But that's Why? not the vibe that I want right now, Jeremy, because this is not 
Yeah. Really, this time is not Birdman for the time. Yet. Okay, it is not that time yet. Like the idea that this team can recreate that. First of all, they're begging. They are dying for that seven seed. They do not want to face Boston in the first round and be their first victim. They will probably get swept. I'm going to say that right now if they face them in the first round. But if you suddenly fall to two or fall to seven rather and face the Knicks, mm -hmm. I mean. This whole idea, I've been talking about this recently, like the NBA has changed. You don't have two or three championship contenders anymore. You have several, and they sort of treat the regular season a little NHL style, where it's like, we don't care where we finish. We got a great coach. We got players. This is what we're going to do in a seven-game series. They feel like they have a chance. And I think it's not just the Miami Heat. It's a lot of these teams. It's all of these teams that don't really worry about their seeding, except for, uh, you know, Stugatz's Knicks there. So I do think right. that the Heat have an opportunity to repeat that. But the funny thing is everybody points to play off, play off Jimmy. After playoff Jimmy does what he does every single year, what do we say? Get him a little more help because he needs a little bit. They've gotten him more help, offensively anyway, than they ever have. And so if they're going to do what they did last year, it's kind of less of a surprise because he has more help around him now. I don't uh, think – that Milwaukee minds that such a big deal is being made of the fact that the Knicks climbed up to 50 wins in the two seed and quietly Doc Rivers gets to sneak in as a three seed. How do you finish third? How do you finish behind the Knicks if you're the Milwaukee Bucks adding Damian Lillard? Well, Giannis is hurt. No, but this I mean, is just the last couple of games. He hasn't been right. hurt all season. It's That's just the fair. last couple of games that he's been hurt. And he played the five before that that they lost to bad teams before he got hurt. And now he's going to play, the Bucks are going to play the Indiana Pacers team that, if yeah. you remember, during the regular season, kind of owned them. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton kind of felt like it was, you know, his show against that team. I, I consider him, I think I said this at some point, he is the more impactful superstar than Damian Lillard right now, Tyrese Halliburton. And now they've got to face them in the first round. Like, that's, that's scary for Milwaukee. And, you know, Doc Rivers is getting everything everybody wanted to see him a little spin for you, Dan. A team letting go of their head coach midway through the season, getting the three seed. Kind of impressive if you look at it that way. What are you laughing about, Tony? Because we're, we're missing something here, and I don't want to stoke the Knicks heat fire, even though I do. But I, I want to say something, and I think we're supposed to have a conversation about Jalen Brunson. Hmm. Jalen Brunson's one of the best players in the NBA. Correct. He is. Like, yes. Have you seen his stats the last month? Uh, 34, 42, 45, 61, 30, 45, 43, 40, 39, 40. Like, he's an incredible player. Preach. More impressive Is that the than conversation? That. No, the conversation is <laughs> the conversation is he's one of the best players in the East, now leading a Knicks team to, to Dan's 90s point. Feels like the 90s again. The Knicks are the two-seed in the entire conference. And we're talking about OJ again. We're it does feel like the yeah. 90s. You know, we are back, by the I, way. The best compliment I can give to Jalen Brunson is that my boyfriend's made me watch a lot of Knicks games in the last five years we've been dating. And for the first time, I actually don't hate it. Wow. The, the question that I pose, <laughs> the conversation I want to have is, if the Heat do end up getting out of the playoff, uh, the play-ins, and it's, it's Knicks Heat, Two seven. Why do you sound like this? Is it from yelling? Oh, it's been a long day. It's yelling. At, what do you mean? We He's just had started. a weekend. Dan. We, just, we just started. Yeah. What do you mean? It's been a long day. Masters we had, weekend. Dan. <clears throat> excuse me. We had a lot of Tony tonight that we were filming last week. Uh, I was in the back end of a little bit of a cold, and then Saturday night. I mean, UFC three hundred, biggest card on the planet, biggest night for MMA ever. Uh, we were screaming. We had a live show at Grails presented by Cuervo. Uh, so we were screaming there. It was it was uh, a big night. A lot of screaming. <laughs> excuse me. Big night. Dan, when your week ends, Tony's begins. Out of point. Mean, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what we do around yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But what I want to have, the conversation I want to have, Dan, is are we sure that the best player in a Knicks Heat series is Jimmy Butler? Jalen Brunson uh, will not get the reputation that you wish for him to have until he starts winning playoff series. He is better than anybody thought he was. Uh, better than I think the Knicks thought he was. Better than Dallas thought he was. Well, better, they got rid of him. Better than and <laughs> yeah, they 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 got rid of him, but. <laughs> but at the time they got rid of him, next to nobody was saying that that was a disaster. And with Kyrie Irving replacing his usage rate, they're still pretty good and I'd say better than the Knicks. The funny part about the Jalen Jimmy conversation is that 
it's the same one for each player, right? Nobody thought Jimmy Butler was a player who could lead the Heat to the type of success that they've had. But he's done it. Now he's done it. Right. Jalen Brunson is kind of the next guy of that mold that has led a team beyond where anyone anticipated. But thus far, it's just in the regular season. With Jimmy Butler in the Heat, it's been they've been just about an average team in the conference over the last several years. They got to the finals as a five seed. They got to the finals as an eight seed. The aberration was the one year that it's they not, were the one it's seed. It's not uh, just that the players don't find the regular season to be worthy of their time. You will not have any kind of legacy based on anything he's done this season. And I'm just as awed by him as you are. But the way that Damian Lillard got the reputation that he did was shots in the playoffs. When you're playing these games that are regional games to a lot of people, they don't pay attention during the regular season. Basketball heads absolutely have no confusion about how good Jalen Brunson is. But now is the time for everybody to discover it because a whole lot of people are going to be tuning in for the first time to see what he can do at the end of games when his team is going to be overmatched. His team is going – like, if they have to play Philadelphia, that's a disaster, Stugatz. That's Philly a, will be the favorites, that, I that's, think. That's, yes. I mean, outside of Boston, they can't have a worse match. Up. They don't want that to start because they don't have the best player on the floor. Especially when you consider the size situation. And that, to me, is what's remarkable about Jalen Brunson. Look at this league. By the way, this sentence that I'm about to say shocked me when I heard it yesterday. It's, it's this is the worst Victor Wembanyama is going to look for his oh. entire career. Did he, oh score, he, scored, he scored 17 points in three minutes the yes. other day? Yes. yes. And so the league is turning into aliens at every <laughs> position. Look at a men Thompson with the Rockets. He's going to be a point guard. And that guy's a ridiculous athlete. Halliburton look what too, Jalen Brunson is doing at six feet tall. The amount of skill required to keep schooling these guys who are longer and more athletic than him and continuously doing it. The problem is... Again, in a seven-game series where you're talking about size and uh, you can sort of intimidate him. You can affect him more so than you can, let's say, uh, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who does a lot of the same things. Gets to his spot, yeah. finds a way to get a shot off, and, and or maybe gets fouled. Longer, more athletic than Jalen. And so at some point, the answers or the question is always going to be, is he big enough? Does he have that ability for it? three, four playoff series to take over at his size? And that's the question. I don't think the answer is yes. We have a lot of – we have sample size of smaller guys leading teams to – through the playoffs to the NBA Finals. I mean, I, he's not Allen Iverson, but the same questions were posed of Allen Iverson. He's six feet tall. How can he lead a team, be a number one on a team, and take him to the Finals? Obviously, we know what happened when he got there and when he got to be in the playoffs, but it feels like that archetype is now – it's almost like the small quarterback – where there was a moment like, wait a second, I think we can put a guy who's like 5'10 back there and he can kind of make something happen. It feels like we're seeing that now, like almost a resurgence of point guards being a little bit smaller, maybe making something happen. We know the matchup issue that obviously exists with the Sixers against the Knicks. The Sixers are overwhelming. You could argue they're the second best team in the conference because when Embiid is healthy, they've been dominant. For the Heat against the Knicks, the interesting part is... This year's roster is actually better situated to guard Jalen Brunson than last year's team because you saw a lot of minutes from Max Struess and Gabe Vincent who really struggled to guard Jalen Brunson. This year, there's a lot of long wings that play on that team. Terry Rozier is actually, as a guard, longer than what you had in Gabe Vincent. And the last time that the Knicks and the Heat played this regular season when they were scheming for Jalen Brunson, he was 5 of 18 from the floor for just 20 points. That's the worst game he's had over this last yeah, stretch. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't very good. Tony's saying, I don't think this is a resurgence, though. A player of this size hasn't won the championship since what? Isaiah Thomas? Like, when is the, a player of this size doesn't get to win the championship? It's well, not a thing. Wasn't Chris Paul, that's for sure. It's, it's not a thing. At 6'2, uh, I mean, it, there's not many. I mean, 6'3, Dwayne. You guys are forgetting, though, that Jalen Brunson, you can't measure heart. I mean, exactly. Thank you, Steve. I, I feel like you can. Thank you. I, I, I feel like I, I mean, can, technically you can. You're right. I feel but. like I can not only measure heart, I can then put it next to a seven footer and that heart can look really small. Well, that yeah. might not be a, a good thing. they've got a bigger heart, though. The seven footers got a bigger heart naturally. And large hearts are actually worse. Yeah, right. Exactly. On a medium sized heart. Well, so now you, so what do you, what, so size. what are you, small alleg heart. Yeah. Not small, but like what are you medium. alleging? You're yeah. alleging an enlarged heart? Well, for, no, not enlarging anything. I don't know. 
Uh, you mentioned small, and I want to play for you guys uh, the video here that I found fairly startling. It was universally mocked. Allen Iverson got a statue different than all the other statues that you've ever seen. I just don't think that by definition, because of its size, it qualifies as a <laughs> statue. I think it has to be a trophy, not a statue. It doesn't seem like, I don't know what the height of a statue has to be to qualify as a statue, but if it's half the size of Allen Iverson, is it indeed a statue? That goes on a coffee table. That's, that's not a, a statue. Yeah, that's a statuette, I believe. Ooh. Like, it's a small, that's a Degas. That's not a Rodin. Well, what is what is the uh, size of a statuette? What is the delineation that we're making between the size of a statue and statuette? I don't know. Put it on the poll here, Juju, huh. at Levitard Show. Do you know the size difference between a statuette and a statue? Because maybe this is a statuette. This was the only one, correct? It wasn't like there were a bunch of these and this was the smallest one. They said, we've got an Allen Iverson statue, and then it looks like a toy soldier. I think that all the statues in that area are the same size, but lacking that context, you see it. It looks almost like when they're making a building and they have the model yeah, of the yeah. building and you're yeah. like, yeah, yes. like, you know, the Zoolander, like how are we going to fit all these people in this building or whatever? Center for ants. Exactly right. Hmm. It looks like that. Like that's, is that the, that's the finished it's product? It's a model, yeah. yeah. They say that statuette is small enough to stand on a table yeah. or shelf and right. this is quite literally small enough to be on a table. You think Iverson's offended by that? Like he's smiling, he's selling it, he's selling that he's happy, it means a lot to him, but he's offended, right? I mean... He, he didn't look offended. Better. He didn't look offended. Well, he's selling it. I mean. Where are they putting this in the facility? Because, like, when I think of statue, I think of the Michael Jordan statue outside of the United Center. Like, that is. I think of Rocky. Yeah, that too. Good statue. That's a statue. That's a statue. Imagine if the Rocky statue was this size, though. No one's oh. asking for the Lincoln Memorial here, all right? But it's a little, it's a little small. Out of curiosity, Stugatz. Allen Iverson strikes you as the type who just goes along with things organizationally. Like fakes it a lot that yeah. Allen Iverson matured, Dan. Uh, that shows <laughs> shows fake enthusiasm for inauthentic things. You believe? Uh, I don't because uh, that's I I I think if he didn't like it, he would have said something. Well, I, right? I just think of him <laughs> as being one of the more authentic athletes, most most him or herself of all athletes, and so uh, given the amount of trouble that he had in general with Philadelphia management. And uh, given that they don't give many statues in general in Philadelphia, do are there across the sports teams, all of them? Are there five statues across all the sports teams? Nick Foles has a big statue in yeah. Philadelphia. What? I mean, yeah. Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> what? He does, yeah. Where? It's the Philly special statue. I don't know exactly where it is. I assume it's near the stadium, though. This one was so bad because they took – like the most iconic Allen Iverson moment, either this one or the step over, right? And he did it against Michael Jordan. And then you turned it into this little tiny doll where I'm like, imagine Michael Jordan looking at that thing and just kicking it over and being like, ah, I can't believe he got me with that I, move. But I now wonder it's so how tiny. many people remember the fact that in his debut at the top of the key against Michael Jordan and what was supposed to be signaling something of a changing of the guard, he crossed over Michael trying to guard him while clearly traveling. Stop that. Clearly yeah. carrying Look, did you the see ball. what Did you see what Izzy was doing? He said it was a palm. It he was, was not palming, a palm. He, well, it was he not got stopped. away. That's that. how he was able to do that to Stop Michael that. Jordan. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. So that's uh, that's not just a Nick Foles statue. That's also the Doug Peterson statue yes. as well. The Both. Yeah. When did they yeah. make well, that? It, Doug yeah. Peterson as a statue bigger <laughs> than Allen Iverson. Uh, and <laughs> I think Nick we Foles. We can narrow it down to within the last five years, probably. I, I don't remember them saying anything about, hey, we're building a statue for Nick Foles and Doug Peterson. <laughs> There's a lot of baseball statues in Philly, Dan. A lot of baseball. There have been conversations in Philadelphia about replacing the Rocky statue with the statue of Jason Kelsey. That is blasphemy. I'm sorry. He's definitely I mean, getting a statue. I mean, oh, they, he's getting a statue, but not to replace the no, Rocky statue. Could never replace the bigger, Rocky statue. It's right. going to be bit, like bigger than you know actual size. It's going to be like the opposite of the Allen Iverson one. They're going to make it like two times as big. Three times as big. His as statue big. has to be the costume from the Super Bowl parade, right? Ooh. 
<laughs> shirtless in a suite. Shirtless in a suite. Yeah. No, think, yeah. not shirtless. No. Shirtless with, uh, they should use actual human hair on the belly. <laughs> <laughs> becomes expensive at that point. Then. Come on, That's now. actually a good idea. It becomes expensive at that point. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. So, come on. You know how there um, are statues far. where it's like good luck to rub part of it? Like the, the Lincoln statue in Springfield, oh, Illinois. Apparently, it's good luck to rub his nose. So his nose is like copper. Yeah. And like, People have been rubbing it so, like, the finishes come off. We were in Ireland, and we saw a statue with, of this woman with, like, the biggest boobs you've ever seen. Oh. And people, I think, touched the boobs because they were, like, a different color. How many baseball players Ooh. do they do in Philadelphia? Steve Carlton, Mike Schmidt, do they have a, a bunch of others? Like, who are the other Phillies that would be? Mike Schmidt has a statue. I'm not certain if, uh, if Lefty does. Steve Carlton won yes. 300 games and doesn't have a statue? He's got, it he's got a statue. I, sure? I, I thought of Stugatz uh, yesterday when uh, that guy caught the Manny, that Dodger fan caught the Manny Machado home run ball and then did the old switcheroo and threw a, boy. Threw a <laughs> different baseball on the field. How did they find that, the boob statue? Yeah, so. boob statue. The internet is amazing that way, Jessica. <laughs> way to go, video. You can find anything. Oh, so fast. You, you don't think Lewis has boobs always on his screen? Definitely a tab open. You, you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't think there's just a, a tab open of statue boobs? Statueboobs.com. I think he just knows the public <laughs> art in Dublin very well. <laughs> He's like, statueboobs.com. <laughs> he, he makes it like art but make it sports, but he art but make it boobs. Is that what uh, Lewis does? Best year for boob statues ever, Dan. <laughs> Stugatz, how do you feel about. Lefty has a statue, Dana. I know, Jessica okay. just mentioned Well, I was that. just confirming it. So does Connie Mack. Uh, Connie Mack. The manager. <laughs> oh. No news on nails yet, though. Checking it out. Joe Lenny. Frazier. You yeah. can't give Lenny Dykstra a statue. Well, I mean, it's their city. Their Crucky? statues. Yeah. Crucky's has to have a cigarette in his mouth. Crucky should have one by, like, that big Redding, whatever it's called, the food court. Ready market. <laughs> the, the famous Crucky story is just a woman coming up to a, him at a party with a cigarette and going, you shouldn't be smoking. You're an athlete. He says, I'm not an athlete. I'm a baseball player. <laughs> baseball Kenny, players should be fat again. Yeah. It's Kenny Powers. That's what that line is for. It's such a great Kenny well, Powers Kenny line. Powers is actually based on John Rocker. John Rocker, <laughs> racist, racist John Rocker is the Kenny Powers, uh, got the Kenny Powers treatment. But we've gone somehow 23 minutes without talking about Stugatz's beloved uh, masters. And it would appear that uh, your boy Scotty Scheffler is better than everybody by a good amount. Like you guys were telling me for so long, it's going to be Rory. It's going to be Sergio, all of these young people. And it's not. It's this guy. Well, he's young, although he doesn't look young. He's 27. He looks like he's 37. Uh, maybe 47, but he was, Dan, it was Tiger-like from this standpoint. He's not Tiger. People are making that comparison. They're talking about, is this guy going to be better than Tiger? He, he's a bad putter, correct? He's he's, he's a, extraordinary at, at ball striking, but terrible at putting. He's an improved putter. He's gotten better at putting. Where he is the best at, and perhaps the best I've ever seen, is tee to green. He is always on the green in regulation, which means he's putting for birdie and most likely getting a par if the birdie putt doesn't go in. But to have two masters, to have two green jackets at the age of 27, to finish second, I believe, at the U.S. Open, the Open Championship, and the PGA Championship, uh, to have all the victories that he has, uh, he is certainly on track to being one of the all-time great golfers. It's very impressive because... To win that tournament, when you're the overwhelming favorite to win that tournament and actually go out and do it and win it and win it the way he did, man, that is tight. Do I have this wrong, though? Because for 10 years, it feels like you guys have been trying to sell me on the latest the new guy who's going to be the special thing. Yes. And this is not the guy people were talking no. about. No, no. It was Jordan Spieth. It was Brooks Kepka. They had it their separate Thomas. runs right. that looked kind of like this. It feels like Scotty Scheffler is kind of settling in, though. He's not going to have fall off like Jordan did after that one sort of choky hole. I forget that what tournament that was. Uh, it seems like Scheffler just stays there and doesn't fall off like Rory does randomly. Uh, Spieth did that at Augusta. It was the 12th hole at Augusta. He did it twice, actually, where he put it in the water, and he hasn't been the same since. So, How'd your prediction on Tiger Woods go? Not well. Hey, he made the cut, Dan. Tiger Woods should be offered a golf cart. I'm serious. He should be afforded a golf cart. Wow. 
Because if I you like want this. your sport to stay relevant and you want Tiger to compete in these tournaments, the reason he's not competing is because he has to walk. And Augusta is very, very hilly. And it is tough at, at his age, Dan, with his body in this physical condition for him to walk those holes. I've seen him try to walk those holes. It's very difficult. Give him a golf cart. If he can cart from shot to ball, shot to ball, shot to sure, ball, he sure, has a chance of winning sure. 10 more you know majors. What? I'll do you I mean, one better. Giving him a 15-stroke lead. <laughs> Stugatz, we have a new segment here uh, we're debuting because we want to celebrate just the general gas baggery that we have uh, throughout sports. Some folks over the weekend, Stugatz, uh, wrote in uh, claiming of your WFAN program director offer yeah. uh, that the morning show on FAN was reporting that they turned you down not that you turned them down. I did not. Does it matter? An offer was made. I said no. I mean, that's it. Okay. I mean. Well, no. The, their on. argument is they said no. Okay. I don't. I, I don't mean, know. Gia was literally begging me to take the job. I mean, is is that their morning show? Is Geo their morning show? Yeah, Geo and Boomer. Okay. Is he in charge of the hiring? Booms. 
Uh, I'm sorry. No, I, but he's got a 12 share at the radio station, so I guess he has some stuff. Well, who are, who are these guys who are going to be uh, celebrated here in our new – this would have been some of the guys that you would have fired upon getting to WFAN. Or if you, promoted. If you had taken the job. Look, man, did you not see what he did when he was program director here? He immediately put himself in drive time. Like, he was not going to well, sit it was around – Well, middays, to be honest with you. Uh, you and me were not middays. Well, I was middays, and then I think you called me like a week before saying you didn't want to do the show by yourself and i removed myself from middays and i came to do the show with you when i hired craig minavini sacrificial but, but many were, in the middays but you were never on middays i won't the station hadn't started yet i mean but you just said you were on middays when you were on originally middays. penciled you were, you myself put yourself in. in the first day yes. the, the, the first day the station yeah. existed you were on in drive time i know but i initially penciled myself in as a midday host you in the afternoons joe rose in the mornings and a national show uh, somewhere in the midday there, and then you said you didn't want to do the show by yourself. I gave up the midday position. I gave it to Minnie uh, in the midday. I think OJ eventually joined him, uh, and I did OJ McDuffie. With you. Yeah. OJ McDuffie. Yeah. Yeah. OJ, have to clarify. Good, good clarification. <laughs> not, not OJ. Simpson. OJ McDuffie, OJ the Dolphin wide receiver. Complicated yes. legacy, huh? Yeah. Oh God. Mm -hmm. It's not a complicated legacy. We did middays. Well, we called it a complicated legacy on our show right after it happened. So. I mean, <laughs> it was. It's not a complicated legacy. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's complicated, Dan. It's, 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 I mean, it's horrific. It's a horrific legacy. It's not complicated. Did you see him at SC? There are a number of people, I won't name names, who are very bummed that Stugatz didn't get this job because they believed Stugatz would have taken them with him and given them the morning slot on WFAN. Taylor? And I'm not saying they would call it the Taylor and Tony show, but I am saying that there are a number of people that are very unhappy about this development. Well, it, who'd they be replacing? Like, who are these guys here that Tierney and get, Sal. get our oh. initial victory oh, here on. for Gas Bag of the Week? Gas Bag of the Week. So wait, 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 let's get into it now. Hold okay, on, Rich, and hold thank on. you for the call, Rich. Wait, wait, get into what? Is he wait, looking for a walk? Up. Soto's looking for – now I love Juan Soto. Yeah. And John Harper, my colleague at SNY, correctly predicted I would at some point go nuts about Soto looking for a walk. A walk is not as good as a hit. And when you have Judge struggling and you got the pitcher on the ropes, you got first and second in a spot right there where you need to do damage. Mm -hmm. You're Juan Soto. You need to do damage, not draw a walk. And Juan Soto's looking for a walk. Swing the bat, bro. That's what you want to get paid. Swing the bat. I don't care if he's a Yankee, if he's a Met. I cannot accept a walk in that spot from Juan Soto. That does not get the job done. Passing the baton is not what I'm looking for from Juan Soto. I'm looking for him to do some damage. Now, if you don't get plenty of pitches to hit, fine. Soto was looking for a walk in that event. So much so that when he walked, it was like he accomplished some great feat. Oh, here we go, baby. I'm pumped up. I walk. No. No, you didn't get the job done. You passed the baton to Judge, who's been cold, and he didn't get the job done. Soto failed. <laughs> Juan Soto has some of the best plate discipline in the history of the sport. The pitch that he's asking him to swing at was practically in the dirt. But if that's not sports radio, I don't know what is. The don't, greatest. Don't yes. take a walk. Do some damage. The, Yankee, the Yankees are 12-4. and four. I mean, honestly, how could I improve that show? Also, after him is Aaron Judge. And then after that is Stanton. So it's not like he's their only bat in the lineup and he has That's to bring in the crazy. runs. But Aaron Judge is struggling, Billy. He, he did cold. make that he's point. Cold. Also, A Angel Hernandez would have ruled all of those strikes. Oh, so. yeah. Stugatz, <laughs> uh, the Stugatz move is strong in that show, beginning the criticism with, I love Juan Soto. Mm -hmm. However. Yes. How you have to do and, it, and Dan. then and then yes. everything that comes after that suggests that you don't actually love Juan Soto. When one of the greatest things about Juan yeah, Soto you know is that he's done? got great plate discipline. You have already put up the Juan Soto umbrella, so you have stated on the front end that you love him. Anything that you say after that doesn't matter because you love him. I mean, you can criticize him all you want. You've already stated that you love him, Sal. I'm proud of you. That's how you do it. I mean. I don't care what you say about me. I'm surprised there's not an argument as to Juan Soto, why he's batting second in the lineup and why they're not going after Aaron Boone. Hmm. Why would they be going after Aaron Boone? Because oh, because they hate Aaron Boone. You don't think Aaron Judge or Giancarlo Stanton should be batting uh, in the middle of the lineup? No. Your second hitter is your best Soto. hitter. He's your best hitter. No, 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 no. Yeah, not according, not according to these guys.
Well, it's supposed who's, to be your best these hitter. guys? Uh, I don't know what their names are, Sal and something or other. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Tyranny. should that yeah. should be the name of the show, Sal and something or another. I th- honestly, I, I, I'm not saying this to like cause a. I thought it was the same person arguing with himself, <laughs> and then just like put on glasses. I didn't realize those two people <laughs> at right, the beginning. Let me see it again. Let me see it again, and let me see if I see what Billy sees of the same. This is a great. You should do that bit. Incidentally, you should do Billy arguing with Evil Billy, where you just put on your glasses and argue, evil, argue the other side. <laughs> evil cat, my dog. All the all the Billies are evil. <laughs> So wait, 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 let's get into it now. Hold okay, on, and thank you for the call, Rich. Wait, wait, get into what? Is he wait, looking for a walk? Up. Soto's looking for <laughs> now. Put on a red hoodie and then a blue hoodie. My colleague, as I correctly predicted, I would at some point go nuts about Soto looking for a walk. A walk is not as good as a hit. And when you have Judge struggling and you got the pitcher on the ropes, you got first and second in a spot right there where you need to do damage. Mm-hmm. You're Juan Soto. You need to do damage, not draw a walk. And Juan Soto's looking for a walk. Swing the bat, bro. That's what you want to get paid. Swing the bat. I don't care if he's a Yankee, if he's a Met. I cannot accept a walk in that spot from Juan Soto. That does not get the job done. Passing the baton is not what I'm looking for from Juan Soto. I'm looking for him to do some damage. Now, if you don't get plenty of pitches to hit, fine. Soto was looking for a walk in that event. So much so that when he walked, it was like he accomplished some great feat. Oh, here we go, baby. I'm pumped up. I walk. No. No, you didn't get the job done. You passed the baton to Judge, who's been cold, and he didn't get the job done. Soto failed. Uh, Jeremy, can you tell me, is Soto 26 years old? How many times has he led the league in walks? Uh, at, at what, 26? or tw- Is he even 26 years old? Soto has led the league in walks three times. Um, Soto is 25 years old. So that's already happened three times. He he made his debut at 19. He's batting 344. He has 15 RBIs already. He has a career on base percentage of 422 because he walks. That's he, correct. he has an OPS over a thousand. It's a 191 OPS plus. A hundred is average. Soto failed because he left the bases loaded for Judge. I don't think the Passed Yankees the don't want to be in bases loaded situations for Judge. Taylor and Tony. Would have done a much better. I think we want to go with TVTC somewhere, something with that. Mm. What do you imagine that would sound? Wait, what is that? Do you guys want TV Taylor's initials? TC mine. How about TVT? Ooh, TNT. Oh, TNT. That's why you're the program director. That's why he's the program director. Shouldn't it be AC TV? No, TNT. We're going TNT. TNT is good. He wanted to put Marty Fish and Andy Roddick together so it could be Fish and Rod. Yeah. Ooh. That's why I'm a I mean, PD, that's as Dano. good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> as they also would want to put LeBron yeah. James and Michael Jordan together and call it goats or something. That <laughs> wow. doesn't mean it's going to happen. Electric. <laughs> well, very often all he has is the idea of a name, and that's all he's got. That's, that's all, all you, you need, need sometimes. That's all you exactly need when right. you're a PD, yeah. Dano. Podcast P. Does anybody know if Paul George does a good podcast? No. Does the name matter. of the podcast? Mm-hmm. Good enough. You yeah. know what I'm thinking now, though? They both do podcasts. I mean, there's no reason. That Tom Brady and LeBron James can't be doing a podcast together. Yep. Mm. A couple of goats cutting it up, mm-hmm. except one's not a goat. I mean, yeah, it would have to be Jordan, I guess, and Tom Brady. Uh, has anyone heard the Savannah James podcast? I was surprised that she was doing that because she has. Uh, been What's very, the name of it? Very purposeful. Terrible name. If that's the podcast, yeah, we don't know the name. Well, then if you don't know the name, then I'm not, not going to listen to well, it. What are we yeah. doing? It seems she has been pretty purposeful about staying private. We don't know very much about her, and we certainly haven't heard from her very much. I don't know why it is she's getting into the podcast game or what it is that she wants to accomplish with that but shortly before LeBron entered that arena with JJ Reddick she did that and I found myself not curious enough to actually listen but waiting for somebody else to listen and report to me what it is that Savannah James is doing with her with her podcast we found the name it's everybody's crazy Eh. that's crazy bad name yeah, bad name great. is it a bad name yeah yeah it yeah. doesn't have savannah in it yeah. the whole point is to have the name in the name gotta work savannah yeah. no not if you're looking to take some time off you start the podcast yeah, 
you know, then you t- go on vacation. Co-host? Everybody's crazy. Then every once in a while, Savannah's blood. there, but yeah. if she doesn't want to host, every- with Savannah. Imagine naming a show the Dan Levitard Boom. show, right? And then someone tunes in, and Dan Levitard is not there. You'd be like, forget this, I'm out. You tune into Everybody's Crazy. You don't know if it's a Savannah podcast, if it's a Bronny podcast, whose podcast it is. Just everybody's crazy. <laughs> You've been spending too much time with Stu Gatz. <laughs> no, it's like the Golic Family podcast. Billy is right about this. Just one member of the Golic Family needs to show up each week. However, if you right. tune into the Golic Family podcast and it's the Wiener Family, you're like, I'm out. <laughs> Billy is feeling a bit rambunctious today because I don't know if any of you saw that the Marlins had the chance to win a series against the Braves yesterday. I hate the Braves. And uh, the way that they lost, uh, they're winning 7-6 to six in the ninth inning. They've got Scott pitching. He's been good all season. He's he been good. sucks. He's- <laughs> Awful this season. Tremendous last year. He, he, it- Garbage. As a pitcher, great guy. He has not I been think. garbage. That guy. That guy. Say that on the front end. That Billy. Guy, their bullpen <laughs> has been bad. He has not been. He's been one of their most reliable people in the bullpen for the better part of uh, more than a season, and he's up 0-2 on Marcelo Zuna. 0-2. Two outs. Two outs. Up so, one. Two up on. one. So they're a strike away. But Acuna terrifies me anytime he's on base. And then Osuna hits a home run to straightaway center. Osuna field. was flirting with a home run all day because he hit the wall twice. The one that he hit in the first inning, it ended up being a single or whatever inning it was. It ended up being a single because he wasn't jogging it out. It was dead center field, hits the top of the wall. He doesn't go past first base. Then he pulls one and he hits it like two feet past where the wall dips, where if it was two feet over, it would have been gone. He was hunting a home run all day. Sneaky good season for Marcelo Zuna. I mean, he's sneaky good career for Marcelo Zuna. I don't understand how it is he's allowed to play baseball games given what's on his resume. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that's the part. Sneaky good career, (laughs) except for, you know, all the terrible things he did off the field. I would listen to a podcast called The Wiener Family. We have a little update. So I mentioned that there was a, a statue in Dublin where everyone rubs the boobs. And I was saying oh, yeah. in Slack how men are so horny that they'll literally rub the boobs of a, of a statue. And then I, we found out, the video team discovered, there's a statue in France where women rub this statue's penis because oh, they yeah. think oh, it will oh, give them well. good Tell me fertility more. luck. So <laughs> that is the oh, rubbed boy. penis of a statue wow. in France. And they kiss the mouth, it wow. looks like. Apparently. So this is all just uh, an- another reason why maybe it's better to not have a statue. Made Newsflash: yeah. Everybody's horny. Put it that on is the correct. P- yes, put it on I the poll, please. That. At Lebetard Show, are men so horny that they will touch the good boobs, podcast name? The no, boobs no. of a statue. Everyone's horny. Not are men so horny that they'll touch the boobs of a statue? We have been talking for a while about how CBS's demo is Angela <laughs> Lansbury. 
<laughs> that it's what CBS is just going for generally. And last night on Sunday night, and this is reassuring. First of all, they start in the morning with that CBS magazine show, and they've got no problem going 90 seconds just watching a stream. Ah, uh-huh, that's what Jane Pauley's all about. It's I mean. so good. Ninety <laughs> seconds, just hearing the sounds of a stream. Yeah. But at that age, a ninety-second stream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, day ending with Stugat uh, Masters, sixty minutes, and then a Billy Joel concert that, for some reason, they cut away from in the middle of Piano Man to go to the local news on. They somehow skewed older as the day went on, and they started with golf. It's so hard to do. It's so hard to do, and yet CBS managed to do it. I imagine their their late-night programming was just mummies. I'm so tired of the local news cutting into things and you missing shows because of the local news. Like, respectfully, local news, who cares? Like, I I know the news. By 11 o'clock, I'm in bed. I've checked the news. I know the news for the day. This was crazy because Billy Joel was, it was his 100th show at Madison Square Garden, which is, it's really cool. To have a residency there uh, is really, really cool. He does it once a month, correct? He does it once a month. It was his 100th show. Uh, But he's singing Piano Man. He's getting to the good stuff. He's got like five or six songs left in him. And uh, they cut to CBS Local News. And I was outraged. I was. I was still awake and... I was outraged. I wanted to see the end of Piano Man. But he's done it a hundred times. I know. And and also, not to, like, reveal too much in case Lehman's family's listening, but they gave us tickets to go see that when we were in New York, and we were like, oh, we can't go. We have plans. Wow. (laughs) Really? I mean, we did have plans, but we could have canceled. They sell them. Sells out all the time. They sold the tickets. The rest of his family went. But Lehman's like, put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebetard Show. Can you cut into Piano Man for the local news? You can't. Uh, Very little in journalism has taken the hit that local news has taken in terms of uh, daily relevance. You know what the local news is great for? Cut in and tell me when there's a tornado. People Mm -hmm. always complain about that, but that Uh, is a vital. There, were, there was a tornado She's like right. two days unless, ago. Right. Unless it's a show I like, then leave me alone. If you're breaking into Piano Man, it better be a Cat 5, mm-hmm. and it better be right over my house. I'd better be missing my house after the news update is done if you're cutting into Piano He's Man. He's done Piano Man a hundred times. This happened us. during the Masters this weekend, right? Where there was that scary five seconds where the announcer says we're cutting to CBS News for a special announcement, and it's like breaking news, and I'm like... What war are we in? Like, what is happening? If you're cutting it, you get those five seconds where, yes. like, I have no what idea it? what's about to happen. You're breaking it was into Iran masters. sending uh, drones yes. to Israel, and it yes. was just like, I have no idea what's going to happen that's here. A, I feel Freak like that's out. a good reason to cut in. Yeah. America is in unprecedented territory. For the first time, a former United States president faces criminal charges in court. In one corner, a sleazy, slutty prostitute with no shame or credibility. In the other, Stormy Daniels. Donald Trump faces charges that he paid $130,000 in hush money to a porn star. No former president has ever stood trial before. This is the first of four criminal trials Donald Trump faces. This is very serious. Right. Was that Hank? Is that a live cut in? I mean, that was a live cut in. <laughs> we were just getting to the good part of the Dan Levitar show. It's dude. My it's house better be like, missing after what this. What happened here? What are we doing? <laughs> that's happening today. A criminal t- a trial uh, that's never happened before on trial for felonies. A U.S. A former U.S. president. I'm going to give you just some bonus facts on Donald Trump over the course of the show today, just so that we don't normalize some of the stuff that is happening, including, again, the first ever United States president with a criminal trial. And this is apparently the least damaging of the four trials. If reelected, this is a bonus fact, Donald Trump reportedly wants to bring back firing squads. Cool. Hmm. Sounds good. As president, Donald Trump spent $15,000 a month in taxpayer dollars on golf carts. For Tiger or? As president, go sit outside, Jeremy. As president, Donald Trump appointed a surgeon to run the housing department. (laughs) Donald Trump has claimed that his daughter has personally created 14 million jobs. 
that's more jobs than Tony's created. <laughs> so when you're in jobs. economy, Bobby, you know? That's so many jobs. 14 million jobs. That's a thing that's happening during the show today. It's not just felonious criminal trial. It's also involving a porn star. Be a little hard to disgrace the office more than that. A little hard, crazy. How do we feel about how serious that uh, that sounded? Was that Hank? That was Hank. That sounded like Hank. More the, concerned the, about the timing. The <laughs> voice actor of a generation. When is the right time to break into felonious former U.S. president uh, on trial for? Not porn? when we're talking piano, man. For I mean, hush, hush. It's weird. You've done it a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, you but... can't really be mad. Also, speaking of like CBS's demographic, I keep seeing clips from the concert Greg Cody went to in L.A. and all the old crooners that were on stage, yeah. include some young crooners too. I will admit, but like I can't think of a more Greg Cody yeah. thing than that concert. I'm, I'm excited to hear from him tomorrow. But and Will was, Arnett. The average age had to have been in like the <laughs> mid 80s. He's going to be so tired tomorrow. I saw Will Arnett in the middle right of that. Right in the middle of it. Pitbull for some right reason. at the end of it for oh, some reason. He was Pitbull. It over on the side. He's yeah. a little older now. I found myself feeling some of what Billy found himself feeling uh, with one of the things that happened at Coachella, Stugat, Will Smith came out and did a version of Men in Black. And I don't know that Will Smith has made it back from that Oscar slap yet. He's going to one of his franchises by going and doing Bad Boys. And that's going to supposedly, it just filmed, it just filmed, got done filming here in Miami. And it's coming out in June, super fast. And I assume it's tied to Will Smith trying to get back into the game in some ways because he's largely just gone away, has he not, since uh, since slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars? Well, not by choice. He was kind of forced away, right? Like It seemed like everyone was trying to get away from him. I feel like, and I could be wrong, Will Smith was only doing Men in Black because of the Chris Rock slap, right? Like This is him trying to like make his public reappearance and look i'm doing this thing it's a safe zone. Like, yeah. yeah but had that not happened do you think that in 2024 will smith would be at coachella performing the men in black i think song? it i think it's the same reason he's doing bad boys that both of those like th these are very well, that money very, bad boys for a check though yeah, yeah come on oh but i think he wants back in with the signature things that people remember him positively for bad boys and men in black are obviously Two of them, and these economies are so giant, Stugatz, with so many employees, they're all trying so hard to figure out the correct way to sustain the economy, to not have the economy further damage because uh, Will Smith, over a 10-year run, you could have made the argument that he was the biggest movie star in Hollywood. That, for 10 years, you could have made that argument. And certainly, if not the the, the, the biggest star, top five, top ten. Oh, easily, Dan. I yeah, mean. but then I Am Legend came out, and that was that. Yeah. Well, it's his personal life that doesn't allow him to remain this way, right? Because you get the slap and you get all these things about his personal life that you hear and maybe people lose respect for him. And then all of a sudden, hey, maybe he shouldn't be the main man on a, you know, $20 million salary movie. Like, I think that reputation uh, is sort of where he lost a lot of respect from fans. And if you put him in front of things, if you put him, you know, as the head man in a movie, I think it's probably going to get laughed at. At least it was, you know, between the slap and now. Billy, you uh, you felt pity for him over the weekend. I felt bad because he's, you know, out there, and I don't think that he'd be doing this had that not happened. And it was kind of, like, awkward. Had he not fun. slapped Chris Rock, he chose to do that. But you're saying if he didn't do it, if he chose not to do it. He did choose that. He That's did true, choose right? he did. to that do was that. His choice. Yes. But I think he was doing it from a noble place. I'm still trying to understand that whole situation. He's also chosen some bad movies throughout the last couple of years. Yeah. Like Gemini Man was terrible. And it's like, how many more times can we put him attached to a movie that it's like, oh, it's Will Smith, but like, wow, this movie sucks. He was an orc on Netflix somewhere. I will say this. If I don't you know what were, that means. If you were what? in... Well, if you were at Coachella and you were on drugs and there's this giant alien head there and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of dancing aliens and Will what do you Smith mean if, appears, by the way? If you were on that drugs. probably did very well. I they mean, go that sounds dance. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ever done the Men in Black ride at Universal? Oh, I love if that If that's ride. Will Smith's yes. legacy, that. like, that's a great that legacy ride. to have. It's hey, the best ride. Can I get spoiler alert? Spoiler alert on the Men in Black ride. Wait, tell me. Spoiler is there, alert. Is there like a, a key to winning it? Spoiler <gasps> alert. The entire ride, they tell you, don't push that button. You push it. You push it. 
Yeah. Right when Wait, they say, what? yeah, right at the end, there's a there's a moment where they say push it, and the first person that pushes it in the cart gets a ton of bonus points. That's right. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Wow. That's Everybody spins good around. Information. Dan, have you ever been on that ride? I we got to do a theme so. park as a show Such together. A I'll do a Universal Let's do it. Let's have a show theme park. Dan, day. when was the last time you went to a theme park, got into a ride? I have been on a ride, and you're going to have to help me with which one it is. There's a lot of shooting. The Avatar a one. A lot of shooting. No, Buzz I've been Lightyear. on that one. Men I've been in Black. On the Avatar men in Black one, is a shooting it's game. Target shooting. That's Men in Black. You're talking okay, about so Men in Black. It's Buzz Lightyear. It's so memorable. Is the game where you shoot the plates? You shoot the aliens. It's it's I was Toy Story Mania. I was, I was terrible at getting the points. Everybody was beating me. I was not very good at shooting. I don't remember what uh, we were shooting. Hmm. And you or always say your button's Potter. broken on the gun. It's like yeah. it's jammed. I don't know what's happening. Something's here. going yeah. on here. Yeah. Classic. So frustrated. Yeah. yeah. I've, Sensors not I've working. told you before that last week though, or? the 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 Avatar ride is the single most amazing ride I've ever been on. The single most realistic, ridiculous ride I have I have ever seen. It had eight hour lines when we were there. Short the fact that it's all fantasy land, so it's not that realistic. You clearly haven't been on the Hagrid ride, Dan. Come on. It's Who? a children's roller. You didn't get sick right that one, Dan? When you're there and it's like the, the things are moving. It gives me moving. a mareo. It, it gives me tremendo mareo. Yeah. The video ones, I hate no, it. thank you. I want reality, Jack.